Good morning. Excuse me. It got me already this morning. We're glad to have you here this morning. Thank you for being a part of this service. We praise the Lord for the opportunity and the, uh, the time that we can share together with one another in the Lord Jesus Christ as we come to worship him on this Lord's Day. It's another great Sunday, and uh, we're happy to be able to be with each and every one of you. As we come to praise the Lord, we want to give him thanks. We, we're not able to sing, but I appreciate Mrs. Gritz playing the piano and uh, providing some music to us as while we're sitting here. We, we're going to sway, swaying along with her and singing, uh, uh, singing to ourselves, and, uh, but we just praise the Lord. And that's what I want to talk, uh, just read to you this morning out of Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17 to 22. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17 to 22. He says in verse 17, as he begins, he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lips of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselor of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. So as we look at the, this, the scriptures this morning and we realize what God is, is doing when we praise him, we praise him with our mouth, we praise him with our lips, we praise him with our hearts. And God is looking for those hearts and those lives that truly are praising him. And today we want to praise him. We want to thank him. We want to give him honor and glory for what he is doing for us. Even through this lockdown, even through the times that we're looking at now and all the uh, things and difficult uh, 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 circumstances that are coming along, we know that God is there. We know that God cares. We ought to keep our, our lips and our heart and our, our lives pure, pure before the Lord to give him honor and glory for what he's doing even through this time. Just remember some of the things that are happening. Wednesday night, we're still live streaming. We are uh, the Bible study. I appreciate Brother uh, Williams taking care of that at 7 p.m. And then uh, also we uh, were other Zoom meetings, the ladies Bible study. If ladies, you want to get involved, you uh, get a hold of Lorraine Williams. She'll let you know what to do. Then, of course, uh, the men's prayer. Uh, we're going to move it, uh, the time. It's still going to be on Friday, but we're moving the time uh, from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. So it'll be this Friday at 7 o'clock, men's prayer. And if you want to be part of that, get a hold of Brother Jamie Hokalon, and I know he'll let you know all the details. Also, there's a ladies' prayer on Friday night uh, led by Janet Nelson, if you want to be a part of that. You get a hold of Mrs. Nelson, and she'll let you know what, what to do from there. But we thank all of those that are listening and watching uh, our, our live stream. Uh, we do get quite a few uh, people that were reached and a lot of views. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Sometimes the views are just maybe three seconds, maybe just a real quick watch and move on. But there are we are reaching people, and uh, we appreciate it. Now, if you live in the area... We like to encourage you to come and visit us once we get back into the into the services here at, in in the building. You're more than welcome to come. We'd love to meet you and uh, just to see you and shake your hand if we can, uh, just to greet you. Glad to be able that you've been watching or he listening to us. We appreciate each and every one of you. And of course, you of Temple Baptist Church be faithful once we're able to come back and uh, get back into the swing of things again and uh, just uh, just give God honor and glory. I appreciate the people of Temple. You have been faithful. You've been faithful all through the years and you're even still being faithful now, even through this time. And we appreciate you very, very much and your ministry. So just help us out and uh, we'll continue to stream our Sunday morning service and uh, stream our Wednesday night services. So uh, just remember that, be a part of it. I know God will bless you. Let's have a word of prayer before we go any farther of doing anything else, and we'll get into the word of God this morning. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this opportunity. And God, this is an opportunity. You always give us opportunities 
to be able to praise you, to glorify you. And Lord, this is an opportunity. Is even though we're not able to meet together as a large group, uh, we're able to meet together on live stream. And Lord, may the people that are sitting there at their homes, they're watching, they're listening. May we be a blessing to them today. God, may you minister to them today. May you do a work within them today. And God, may you do a work in our hearts and our lives that are here. And Lord, that, that you will work in us, that God, you will bring comfort to us, that you'll bring encouragement to us. Lord, that also you'll bring conviction to us, that you will change us. God, we need to be a people that are changed people, people who show forth Jesus Christ and what he is doing in our lives. So Father, I ask your blessings upon this time today. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we give you all the honor and glory for what you're going to do today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have your Bible with you this morning, we want to go to the book of Proverbs chapter three. The book of Proverbs chapter three, a familiar portion of scripture. We want to look in verse five and six. Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. This is familiar to all of us. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Law of faith. I've been talking about different law, different law of obedience, different law uh, of, of different uh, things that I've talked about, encouragement. And today we want to talk about the law of faith. The law of faith. A life of faith is also a life of trust. It is essential it is, is, it is a life of faith that is determined by the law of faith. We got to understand in the Old Testament, when they talk about trust, it's the same word that we use in the New Testament for faith. There has to be faith in our life. There has to be some faith, and there is faith. All people have faith. Now, it all depends on what they have faith in. We all are born into this life, and we are all have our, our beings we, we live in our families. We grow up in our families. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, trait, uh, characteristics of our family. And uh, that's where we get our values a lot of times is from our families. And we go through our families and we look at those values. And, and that's what we want to try to live by. It, it's also a faith. Uh, I had a fellow one time who, is a, who was an evolutionist. And uh, we was talking about our, our beliefs. I said, but that is your faith. And he was a little bit offended, thinking that that's his faith. It is. It's his faith because he has total faith in it. He gives himself over to it. He believes every word of it that is faith. And we as Christians, when we come to know Christ, God then changes our priorities. God then changes our essence. God changes our thinking. And that's one of the things that is hard for especially adults even young adults who come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior, to have that change in their life. They have a hard time changing, changing uh, thoughts, changing actions, changing patterns that they have already have put in their life. But when we come to true faith, God is going to do a work within us that will change us. And that's what we see here in, in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse uh, 5 and 6. Habakkuk chapter two and verse four says this, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. We find out there are people who, who try to live a, a, a faithful life, but they only do it to uplift themselves. And when they uplift themselves, they're not really truly uplifting the Lord. And this is one of the things we have to understand. True faith is not uplifting ourselves, but true faith is uplifting the Lord and watching the Lord change us and watching the Lord bring us up. God always wants us to be above what Satan is and wants us to be above what the world is. And a lot of times uh, we think, no, I, I got to have that relationship with the world. Yes, we have to have a relationship with the world to, to lead them, but we should be above the ideas and their, and their lifestyles. Our life ought to be above that. And true faith brings us above that. Not that we're any better, but when you find what we'll find out today, if we're going to live that life, then there's going to be a upbringing that comes to our lives. 
We find out in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. That's one of the hardest things to do in a Christian life is to walk by faith because we are people of sight. We, we want to know what's ahead. It's like you driving the car. Most of you drive a car. Would you like to drive a car blindfolded? No, it's silly. You know, you look at the road. You look at, look at that. And see, that's the way we are humanly. But God wants us spiritually by faith just to follow him. Not by sight, but by faith. Knowing that whatever is down the road, God is taking care of it. God is leading us, and we'll see that as we go along. Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whosoever is not of faith is sin. When we're truly not living of faith, well, then we're in sin. There's no middle ground to faith. It's either we are or we're not in faith. And faith should overcome anything else that's in our life if we're going to have that relationship with God. For whosoever is not, uh, says faith is defined in Hebrews as 11 and verse 1 as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again, this is that walking by faith, not by sight. It's the evidence it's the substance of things hoped for. What do I hope for in my life? What do I really hope for? Do I hope to, to win uh, the lottery? Do I hope to have uh, all my bills paid off? Do I hope to have you know uh, the, enough money to retire? Do I hope to uh, able to have... We gotta understand, what are we hoping for? In a Christian's life, his hope is in Christ. I hope that God will take care of these substance things that I need. And that's it's the substance that I have faith in. And it says there, and, it, and for the evidence of things not seen, I may not see it yet, but God will provide. That's the one thing that we have learned through this time, through this year, how God has provided. Not that we said, God, I have need. He knows what we need, but we pray, we study, we get into the word of God, we stay faithful and watch God provide the needs of our life. God wants to provide. God wants to take care. Martin Luther said this, faith was not such, uh, excuse me, faith was not so much a matter of believing in propositions as of trusting in a person. Man was created to trust God only and holy. Anything, anything less is faithful, uh, faithlessness and godliness. Faith is a lively confidence in the goodness of God. I like that. Faith is a lively confidence in the goodness of God. When I'm in faith, God always gives me good. God will always do me good. God will always produce good. So faith demands some things. And there's three things I want us to, to look at at the time we have remaining about the law of faith. First of all, the decision of trust. In verse number five of Proverbs chapter three, it says there, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Human feebleness. One of the, one of the things that if you're not careful and when we, when we live our lives and we don't live it as we should, you know, there, there is such a thing as rest. There's such a thing as relaxation. There's such a thing as, as letting things go. So that if we begin to worry about it, we have anxious, we have, we have all these different feelings, distress, it affects our health. It affects everything of our life. And when we allow those things, it begins to affect different parts of our body. And it affects different areas of the body to, di to different people. I was in a very stressful situation. And because of allowing that stress to be there, I did not deal with the stress. I just got angry. I just got upset. I, I almost just, you know, uh, didn't want to have a part with anybody. And because of allowing that stress, it began to affect my heart. 
And because of that, now I have a heart problem. I have uh, the, the AF, of course, and uh, right now they're trying to do different medications on me and uh, just to tr try to get it uh, because they said the left side of my heart has weakened. And so we're trying to get stuff to be able to strengthen that back up so there won't be any clots in my heart, which then if you have clots, they can cause a stroke. So we have to realize that sometimes when we rest, that means rest, forget about things. But of course, some people have a hard time doing that. But what happens when we allow those stresses of life, we begin to have trust the feebleness of human, human life is a secret of divine ability. There's the secret to how trusting, decision of trust is the fact that we make a decision to trust. God doesn't make us to trust. God doesn't cause people, make people to get saved. Jesus offered it, then it's up to us to decide on it. When Jesus came and, and he died upon that cross, the Bible tells us that no man made him. The Bible says he laid his down life uh, willingly. He was, he, he was making a, a decision to fact to be that sacrifice of sin for everybody. And now, because he did that and he rose again on the third day, he offers this salvation. He offers it, but it's up to us to decide to either to take it or reject it. It's still our decision. It's our decision to trust. It's our decision. If we're truly trying to trust God, then it's still our decision to follow him. It's still our decision to, to, to agree with him. It's still our decision. It's always a decision. You make so many decisions in your life. You make decisions as soon as you got up this morning. You know, am I going to get up or not? You know, am I going to comb my hair? Do I need to wash my hair? Do I need to, you know, do I need to, you know, this or that or the other? What am I going to have for breakfast? Do I really want breakfast? You know, maybe I just want a cup of tea. You know, we make decisions. We make decisions every day, and those decisions always have a consequence in our life. And when we make decisions that have consequences in our life, that causes us to not be able to perform. Because I remember when I was going to school, when I was younger, there's the fact that, that <coughs> excuse me, they always told us that breakfast, especially young, uh, young people or, and, and children going to school, they need a good breakfast because that keeps their mind sharp. They then can make those decisions. And of course, they will keep that will keep them until lunchtime, and then they'll have a good lunch. And most of us, if we have a good lunch, we want to take a nap. But hopefully it's to keep the mind sharpened. We need to feed that. But so many times we decide not to, and then the consequences come that we're sluggish that we're tired, that we're wore out because we're not taking care. We're making, even those small decisions like that have consequences in our life. One of the things I had to, to do with all this, the, the, even before I found out, I, I'm borderline high, uh, high blood pressure too. And I had to go to, to decaf coffee. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons I had to go to that because of the high blood pressure. And now because of this, this heart, I have to drink decaf coffee. And I, I always, in the morning, have a decaf coffee and tell my wife, boy, this stuff wakes you up. Yeah. But I, I drink caffeinated coffee. It affects me. It causes a reaction in me. I get upset. I get irritable. I get mad. I get short breath. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen when I drink caffeinated coffee. So I've made decisions in my life. I don't want that. So I can't have that. Now you may say, well, isn't that uh, uh, sacrificing? Yes, it is. You see, a lot of times we don't want to sacrifice things that will help us. We want things that we enjoy ourselves, what we want. Human feebleness. We've got to come to the point of realizing, as it says in verse 5 there, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Realizing that I have to trust in my heart. But it's a feeble thing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, 
Paul said, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. And what is he saying there is the fact that I choose to trust God in every situation and circumstance of my life. The first thing we have to do in a decision with God is to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the first thing and decision that we really have because it's decision of eternity. If we have never come to know Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have rejected that message. We say we don't want to know Christ. Then we are under the condemnation of God already because we made that decision. And as we've made that decision, we're under that condemnation, then we're under whatever God says this, this world is going to be like. The sin of the world. That's what we're under. And God will judge that. But if we decide to come under Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior, then we're not under that condemnation anymore. We're out of the wrath of God. We're under the protection of God. And being under the protection of God is what we need to decide. Do I want to be under the condemnation of the world or do I want to be under the protection of God? It's our decision. It's our decision. Decision calls for a surrender to Christ. It calls for a surrender to Christ. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. What does the Bible says in the Old Testament? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with everything you have. See, that's a surrender. It's not a surrender of servitude. It's not a surrender of giving up. It's a surrender to allowing God to begin to work within us. It's a surrender, the fact that, that, that we're able then to allow God to begin to work and do his will in our hearts and our life. He begins to take care of the emotions of our life. We all have emotions. Now, I was trying to look and, and was working on a sermon this week about crying. And I'll probably still hopefully get to it. But it's the fact that the word cry itself and most of, of the Old Testament and the New Testament is not talking about tears, but it's talking about a calling out. So many times we call out, and I, 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 I don't want to give it away as, as much as possible, but uh, one of the things I want to do in, the, in the talking about the introduction is talking about a baby crying. Because the baby cries in different ways. And if you're not a mother and you finally become a mother, you'll learn that a baby will cry when it's hungry and there's a certain cry, it'll cry. When it's angry, it'll certain cry, it cries. When it's upset, it's a certain cry when it cries. When it's selfish and just wants attention, it's a certain cry. When it hurts, there's a certain cry. And when you begin to understand there's certain cries, God says, I wanna hear you call out to me. And we got to understand this is a this is a trust issue. We trust God. We decide to trust God and we call, we cry out to him. This is a personal trust to surrender. A personal trust to surrender. It's your will being surrendered over to God, trusting him that he knows what's best for me. Also, it's a decision to trust God for a rejection of self. He says there in verse number five, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. <clears throat> we understand different things. We, uh, th there's different cultures in this world. And as you begin to learn about the cultures, there's an understanding that they have that is different from our understanding is because of the way the culture is set up. It's the way that they have been brought into the culture. That's one reason why it's important that, uh, that uh, young couples who want to get married to have uh, a time, <coughs> excuse me, of, uh, of counseling, a time of counseling. Because what's going to happen, and they don't realize it, they're in love. I have no problem with that. They're in love, but they don't realize that they're uh, putting two cultures together. And those two cultures, there's going to be some understanding that is different from their understanding. 
And they're going to have to learn how to deal with the different cultures. The different understanding they had of how they were brought up. I do things that I, my mom and dad had done because that's how I was brought up. And uh, we have to understand that, that when, when those two cultures come, there's going to be a clash. And there has to be some rejection of self. Okay, I, have, I can't maybe do that. Maybe that will cause a problem in the marriage. Maybe that will cause a separation. Maybe that will cause some hurt. Maybe that will cause some resentment. We have to begin to understand and choose. We have to begin to realize the rejection that we have of ourselves. Our own, what we think is right, may not be right. Either we renounce self or we, or, or, or we surrender to self and renounce Christ. So many people want to, to grasp the Savior with one hand while they hold the world with the other. It cannot be done. And we must follow the Savior without reservation. You can't serve two masters. You'll serve one or you'll hate the other. Excuse me a minute. This tie, for some reason, is choking me this morning. <clears throat> We got to realize that to, to, to reject ourselves, reject what we think is right, reject what we think should be happening, reject what we want happening instead of what God wants happening. We have to come to that point of understanding this is a, a decision to trust. Number two, the devotion of trust. Look in verse six. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. We find out practicing the presence of Christ moment by moment involves more than learning of Christ in the word and speaking of Christ in prayer. It means unbroken fellowship with, with the Lord through a life of unqualified dependency and obedience. It's more than just saying, yeah, I'm going to let him have his way. <coughs> in my life my goodness either Satan doesn't want me to do this this morning or is this the cold real bad we find out that, that uh, we have to come to the point it's, it, in all my ways acknowledge him in my ways well, sometimes we use this this, uh, th this term I'm set in my ways. Have you ever heard that? Most of us have heard it. I'm set in my ways. And sometimes we are so set in our ways that, uh, that we, we cannot really understand what is real. We're so set in, our, in the, way, the way we came up, the way we were brought up. We're so set in that way that we cannot see there's an alternative. And what God's going to do, he's going to show us that there's an alternative. If we're going to have a devotion of trust to God, it's becoming to have that relationship with him. And in that relationship, he is going to, he is, is the main person who's going to change our attitudes, our actions, our way of thinking. We acknowledge him in our lives. And we have to allow that, that acknowledgement of God to truly begin to, to change us and transform us. The renewing of the mind being transformed, being made from an old caterpillar into a butterfly, that metamorphosis. And you know, folks, people don't want to, sometimes they don't want to get to that point in their lives. They just want God to, to well, God, make sure I have what I want, make sure what I have, what I need, make sure that my life goes along smoothly and God, I, I'm happy. No, that's not happiness in God. It's acknowledging him. It's devoting to him a life that is obedient and dependent upon him. You know, I live my life every day dependent upon him. 
I look at the I look at this pandemic and I even look at all the things going on in the United States of America and you know I could let them uh, begin to to bother me I can begin to allow, allow it to to affect me I can begin to allow it to to permeate me and I can begin to be uh, uh, cynical I can begin to get upset but you know that's not what God wants that's not what God is when I begin to look at the things of God and what God is doing, what God is doing with me in my life, where he has taken me, what he is doing now, overshadows all those things that are going on. Because I, I, am, I am dependent upon him and want to be obedient. <clears throat> Every moment, Jesus should, thinking through your mind. Jesus, every moment, should, looking through your eyes, speaking through your lips, working through your hands, walking through your feet, loving through your heart. That's when we have devoted of trust with the Lord because we're giving him everything. We're getting everything that had come into our lives, into our hearts, because it's all because of him anyway. We must uh, daily serve the, the, the pleasure of Christ. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Christ while on earth consumed passion was to please his father. John 4, 35, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John 8, 29, and he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone for I do always those things that please him. Who do you please? Who do you really please? Now, as husband and wife, hopefully you please your wife. Wife, hopefully you please your husband. And what do we mean by pleasing them? Being a pleasure. Being a help. Just being kind to one another. Just have that, that, that thank you and you're welcome. Just that that. That, that simple thing sometimes that we don't, we take for granted. And who do we please? You may say, well, I'm single. I, I only please myself. Is it we really should be pleasing ourselves? No, we should be pleasing God. Everything that we do, everything that it goes on in my life is to please God, to please him to do whatever he asks me to do to please him. When I make those decisions, I want to make the decision that will please God. When I do my work, I want to do the work to the point where it pleases God. When, when, I, when, I, when I talk to people, I want that to the point that my words are encouraging to people that they please God. When, 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 I, when I'm around people, they, my attitude and, and just my heart and my emotion, they ought to be so that it pleases God. That when people are around us, they want to be with us. They want to be around us. They want to be just, just a part with us. But of course, that's a devotion of trust. That has to truly trust God and a devotion to it. Not only do we have a decision to trust and, and a devotion to, of trust, the third thing this morning, direction of trust. In verse number six, again, in all that ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And he shall direct thy paths. How many of you blindly follow your, uh, uh, what do you call them? Your GPS. Just blindly follow it. It doesn't make a difference. You don't look at a map. You know, I still look at a map. You know, you spell it M-A-P. You know, I still look at a map. I still have an A to Z. I still have a map, a road map. And when people say, you're going this way, I always like to look at the map and to make sure. Because I have had times following that G GPS and it's taken me to the wrong place. And so, you know, there, there is a path that needs to be taken. There is a path that God has for each and every one of us. And that path is the straight and narrow way. Many that don't go that way. It may be a little bit rough. It may be a little bit 
difficult. But when God is directing the path, he will make the way straight. He will make the way easy. But we have to follow him. We have to allow him to direct us, trust his direction in our life. God seldom guides a soul that follows afar off. He will not reserve his way to the ear that will not listen. His will is revealed through his word. We get involved in his word and read his word. Right now I'm in the book of Acts. I'm reading the book of Acts in my Bible reading. And it's exciting again to, to read what, what the, how that the apostles and, and, and the church there in Jerusalem and, you know, it's interesting to me, so many times I've had people, uh, young missionaries that come into the country and say, you know, they won't come if it's in a, uh, uh, in a, in a uh, uh, community hall. Well, you got to remember, the first church didn't, they, they rented that room in the synagogue. They didn't have a church building of their own. It was a different, it was a, a rented room. It was a place and they just, well, really it wasn't even rented. They went to the porch and they got together and they were, and they, they were preaching and teaching and everything there. And then finally, that's why the Jews kicked them out of the synagogue because they were growing quicker than, than the Jews, Jews were. And folks, it's the fact that when we come to, to the Lord, we ask him to direct our paths, then God will take care of everything else. God will supply the need. God will give the direction. God will bring in the people. God will do it all. But we got to be on that path that God wants us to be on. God's power will remove obstructions in our life. Remember what the Bible says, if we had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed and we ask this mountain to remove, what happens? It removes. The obstacle is out of the way. But we allow, we think obstacles are, are, are terrible things. No, obstacles is the time when we see God work. When we allow him to work as he's taken us down our path. We miss out when we say, God, I want a smooth, smooth ride. God, I want it, want it easy. We miss out of how God will do those things. How he'll remove the obstacles in our life. Isaiah 40 and verse three, Isaiah 40 and verse three, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight the desert a highway for our God. And the, and the, and the term the desert a highway is direction in the Greek. Make a right direction. Make sure you're going the right way. Make sure you're headed in, in the right way. Uh, on my phone, I, you probably do too, I have a, a compass and I can lay that compass down and, and it finds true north. And that way I know which way north, south, east, west is. You know, because right now with, with this time of year, the sun doesn't get up high enough at noon to be straight above us. And so it's just it's mostly in the south. And so you, you get turned around a little bit. The part of the United States that we're from, that it comes out of the east and then and it comes straight up above us at, at noon and it goes straight down the west. So when you don't know your north, south, east, west, you, you, you get uh, disoriented. And of course, our streets here in this country aren't on a grid. You know, they followed the, the cattle cart wherever it went. And we, sometimes you may be, in a, you think you're going north and you may be going south. You may think you're going east, you may be going west. I remember one time the GPS told us to come up to a junction and it said to turn right, but we were supposed to turn left. So we turned left, but it never told us we was going the wrong way. It just told us the next, uh, next time turn right, we had to turn left again. You see, a lot of times you got to just follow what God has for you. Don't follow what the world is telling you to follow. Don't follow along with the world and what it has. Follow the direction of God. He will give us a direction. He will take care of our paths. Psalms 23 and verse three. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It's the fact that he takes care of it for his name's sake. We're following God because he's gonna be the one that says, I will take care of you. And if he promises to take care of us, 
then he's sure with his word. <clears throat> if God is not sure with his word, then that's when we get disoriented. But God will not allow us to get that way because he's sure in his word. He promises it. He will always keep his promises. I will direct your path. But we just have to be willing to follow it by faith. Not by sight. With our whole heart. With every being that we have. It's a decision that we make. Then if we make that decision to have faith in him, to follow him, then it comes to a devotion to that trust. We're devoted to God. He's everything of us. He's what he wants in our lives. Then if we're going to be devoted to God, then we're going to follow the direction of trust. He's going to direct our paths. He's always going to get me to where I need to be. You know, you, you buy a train ticket. It says you're going to go from Wolverhampton to, to London. Now, it's still a ticket that's going to get you from Wolverhampton to London. Now, you don't know what's going to happen on the trip. The train may stop and say, you're going to have to get off here and get on a bus. I remember one time that happened to, that happened to uh, our, our children one time. They was up in uh, Liverpool and coming back and had to get on a bus. And it, the bu and it just so happened, the bus driver didn't know where he was going. And the bus driver got lost. But it still got them to the train station, maybe late. But it still got to the destination they were going to in the same way. God says, listen, I have a path for you. I will take care of you. You just follow it. No matter what's in the road, I'll take care of it. No matter what the obstruction, I can move it. No matter what is going on, I can take care of it. But it all comes down to a decision. A decision in faith with Christ. Do you have enough faith to follow him? Do you have enough faith to allow him to change your life? Do you have enough faith to trust him? It all comes down to trust. Trusting the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Oh, that makes a total difference when we look at it that way. What God has for us when we trust him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for these to listen on online and on live stream. I ask you to bless them. I ask you to just watch over them. Thank you for uh, Brother Jamie to be others that are here today I ask you to just bless them Lord as we we've talked about trusting maybe there are some out there this morning that God they need to trust you Jesus as their Lord and Savior to begin to realize that God they can trust you for their life for their substance for their life and their direction God you're in control you're in control of my life and I thank you for so I ask you, Father, that you just be with us. Be with our, everything that we hear. Plan in our lives the decisions that we make that will always be pleasing to you. To give you the honor and glory that's due to you. Thank you for our help. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for what you're doing. May we trust you. We give you all the honor and glory for today. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening today. We appreciate it very much. Please get in contact with us if you need some uh, encouragement. Uh, just let us know. Uh, just uh, we're here for you. Thank you. God bless you.